Hey, everybody. Happy Monday. My name is Van Johnson, and today I will be teaching on Ephesians uh, chapter 3, verse 14 through 21. Uh, I know it's Monday reflection, Monday moments, so happy Monday. I know for some people, uh, it's the beginning of your work weekend. You, you, may, you may not be feeling so happy about getting the day started, but even on Mondays, it's a day that the Lord has made. This is a day that the Lord has made. Uh, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, with that being said, let, let's jump into the word. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. And I'm going to read through verse 21. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 says this. For this cause, I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length in the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ, which really pass of knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power in that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end, amen. And hey, now, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 uh, through 21, we see uh, the Apostle Paul, Paul really praying a prayer. Apostle Paul is really making uh, an appeal to the church at Ephesus. Uh, Apostle Paul is saying he's really dropping some golden nuggets, some golden jewels on the church at Ephesus. And he's saying that uh, his prayer, above all things, in, in, in a sense, in a way, his prayer, at least in this passage of scripture, his prayer is that God will strengthen us with might by his spirit in our inner man. Uh, what, what is this prayer that Paul is talking about? Uh, first, and first, let me rewind a little bit. In Ephesians 3, 14, how I know Paul is praying this prayer, or this is a prayer of Paul, is because he says, for this cause, I bow my knee. And as um, people of God, I, I know that life can be busy sometimes. You got to be on the move. You got We got so much going on, right? We got to go to work. We got to, uh, for some people, take care of kids. For others, you got to... Uh, Deal with traffic going to and from. You got to run errands. You got uh, got to try to exercise. Maybe whatever whatever you may be doing. Uh, I know we're busy, but um, Paul says for this cause I bow my knee. I know sometimes uh, I would say this this way. Any prayer is good prayer, but I, I want to point out some, it is good to have an appointed time where you spend time with God and not where you walking around or not while you're just driving a car, but uh, have time where you bow down on your knees and spend time with God and, and give God your undivided attention. Uh, and Paul says, for this cause, I bow my knee. And then Paul later on goes on to say that in verse 16, he says that his, what he's praying for, what he's bowing his knee about. Uh, in verse 13, 16 he says three ephesians 3 16 that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man paul is praying that believers paul is praying that those who have accepted jesus christ as their personal lord as their lord and savior paul is praying that we get strong <laughs> paul is praying that god would strengthen us, that God would upgird us. God will expand our inner man and make it strong and strengthen us with might by his spirit. Uh, as Christian believers, uh, we it, we hold to the truth that once we accept Jesus Christ in our heart, the Holy Spirit comes 
comes and dwells within us. God, the Holy Spirit, comes and dwells within us. Um, just so I can prove that I'm not making this up, let's go to uh, first, first Corinthians chapter 6, and we could go with, with verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says this. What? Question mark. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? See, when we come, when we come into the Christian faith and we accept Jesus as our Savior, from that point, the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And once the Holy Spirit dwells within us, He's there to guide us. He's there to correct us. And uh, it, it, and Paul is saying that he is praying that God will strengthen us with might by his spirit in our inner man. Um, the epic battle that me and you face, the epic battle that we face on a day-to-day -day basis, on a day-to-day -day, um, pattern, is our spirit versus the flesh. And if we'll be honest, sometimes the flesh get the victory, sometimes the spirit get the victory. Paul is saying he wants our spirit to be strong enough. Paul is saying that he wants our spirit to be uh, large enough that uh, that we be strengthened and that we be able to say no to the flesh. Uh, this message, and this, and this is going to be a brief lesson, this message is for those of us who would want to be drawn closer to God. And not just be drawn closer to God, but for those of us who wants to see God do exceeding abundantly above all that we can even ask or think. Uh, this is 2024. I want to see God do great things. I want to see God um, draw. I want to be drawn closer to God. I want to walk closer with him. I want to be able to hear God's voice more clearly than I ever have before. I want to be able to love people. I want to be able to have joy and peace like never before in, in greater measure. And if you are like that, um, Paul is offering us the um, solution. God, is, uh, Paul is offering us the pathway. He's offering us the remedy. He's saying that we have to reach a point where we uh, cooperate with God to have him, that God will strengthen us with might by his spirit in our inner man. Uh, what 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 would having a strong spirit do for us? What would having a strong inner man do for us? Well, let's take a look at verse number 17. Ephesians 3, verse 17 says this: that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ. Verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. Um, verse 18, one more time, that ye may be able to comprehend with all the saints the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of God, and to know the love of God or the love of Christ. Uh, if, if We can ask for a lot of things this year. Uh, some people, you may want a car. You may want a house. You want, may even want a promotion on your job. What all of those are good things, but uh, nothing is more valuable, nothing is more rewarding than to knowing God more, to be drawn closer to God, to walk closer to God, be in a more intimate relationship with God. And if you prioritize that, if that's what you want, uh, Paul is saying that we have the opportunity. Uh, if our inner man is strengthened, to know the breadth, height, and depth of the love of God, which really pass of knowledge. Um, uh, what, what, what? How can I better explain this? Uh, Paul is saying that uh, his prayer and petition is that we come to know Jesus and how much He loves us, uh, and to the point Jesus loves us so much so. In passive knowledge, which or the uh, New American Standard Bible version says, is surpassive knowledge. 
What does that mean? Sometimes love, God love, really not sometimes, all the time, God loves us more than what even makes sense. God loves us so much so it past surpasses knowledge. Have you ever done wrong and yet God showed mercy and kindness and gave you a second chance and a third chance and he just kept loving on you and kept pouring out his mercy towards you until you got it right, until you listened to him and chose to obey? Uh, that's, the, that's the love of God surpassing knowledge. The love of God where we should have faced consequences, where we should not have been the beneficiaries of God's grace when we should have been the beneficiaries of God's mercy, yet God love for us, yet Jesus' love for us surpassed that, surpassed all faults, surpassed all shortcomings, and yet he picked us up and rocked us in his arm and kept us in fellowship with him. Uh, that's the love of God, and sometimes it surpasses knowledge. It surpasses what makes sense in all man. Paul is saying this, um, once we are able to have strong inner man, we will be able to comprehend the love of God. And not just only that, um, Paul follows up in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, by saying this. Let, let me take my time and read it. Let me not rush past it here. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It says, uh, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Um, now unto him who is able. God, in other words, God is able to blow our mind. God is able to do abundantly above all we can ask or think, but it's only going to happen when we, through one way. One way. And this is the way. Uh, Ephesians chapter 19 says this that we may be filled with the fullness of God. How do you become filled with the fullness of God? Um, God uh, is looking to give us more of him. Uh, what are some ways of getting filled with the fullness of God? One way is prayer, having a consistent prayer time. Uh, I encourage all, all of us to, no matter how long you pray, uh, set aside some purpose time that you pray every day. Number one, point number one. Point number two, how do you get a strong inner man or become full with the fullness of God? Uh, number two, which is probably number one, you got to be obedient as well. Walk with God and choose to be obedient. Uh, point number three, studying his word. Um, just like we have a daily time that we eat breakfast, that we have a time that lunchtime, you know, it's funny for, for those of us, most people think noon at noon, 12 o'clock is lunchtime. No matter what's going on, we could be at work, we could be at home, we like, oh, what time is it? It's time for me to make some lunch. It's lunchtime because we got to feed our bodies, right? We, we feel hungry for our bodies. Well, what about our spirit? What about um, purposefully setting a time during the day where we choose to read the word of God? How about uh, at noon before we eat lunch, we read one one chapter of uh, one chapter from the Bible? Uh, that's that's why feeding our spirit, getting a strong inner man, because the more we feed our spirit, the stronger our inner man becomes and the stronger our inner man becomes. We able to comprehend the breadth and the depth and the length of God's love. And once we have that type of comprehension, we're able to say no to the flesh because we can walk in the love of God. We feel God's presence. We feel we are filled with the fullness of God. And that's what Paul is praying, that we will so much so see God that we will get our inner man, our spirit will get full with the fullness of God. And from that point, we start comprehending things. We walk in it. We walk in with God. We can feel his love. We know his love for us. And at that point, he says, uh, Paul in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, he says, God will do it, can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can actually think. And a lot of times we stop right there on that scripture, but that's not where the scripture ends. Paul says, according to the power that worketh in us. 
We have to choose to feed our inner man. We have to choose to feed our spirit. And once we choose to feed our inner man, once we choose to feed our spirit, rather than by having a set daily prayer time, by um, being obedient to whatever God calls us to do, and by reading his word, our inner man gets strong. We get full. We, we walking in the love of God. We're comprehending the love of God. And my, 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 at that point, I, Paul says, we, we're going to see God do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. Uh, what, what, what that may be looking at, it may, I want joy unspeakable. I want peace of mind no matter what's going on, no matter if it's, things are good, things are rocky, whether it's a storm. I just want to have that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of uh, glory divine. Uh, air of salvation, washed in his blood, born of, of his spirit. Uh, I, I just want to, I just want to feel God's presence day in and day out. And Paul is saying this: that it all starts with a strong inner man. Once we become Christian believers, God places His Spirit on the inside of us, and it's up to us to feed that Spirit, to strengthen our inner man, to fight the challenges of the flesh. And to comprehend the breath, death, and length, that's that's the love of God, which really passive knowledge or surpassive knowledge. Uh, God loves for us, don't, don't even make sense sometimes. He, he just loves us so much. And that's my prayer. I join in, Paul, that every listener today uh, would choose to purposefully spend time with God. Um, on your knees type prayer, spend time with God. Uh, setting a time, like before you eat your lunch, read scripture. Um, before you eat dinner, read scripture. If you feed your body, feed your spirit. I'm telling you, God said, Paul says that God will do great things in our lives if we choose to strengthen our inner man. Be purposeful in your relationship. Be intentional with your time with God. Be intentional that saying, I want to be obedient to God. And whatever he says, I'm going to do because I want a closer relationship and walk with Jesus. With that being said, uh, let us close out and pray. Uh, Father in heaven, how great you are. And Lord, we thank you for uh, your love towards us, that uh, that our hearts may be able to, I ask that our hearts will be able to comprehend the breadth, depth, length of your love. Lord, your love is long. Uh, you've forgiven us of our sins and you removed our sins as far as the East is from the West. And we thank you for that. And Lord, we know that you love us um, beyond measure. Matter of fact, God, you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son. So thank you. So now, Lord, I pray that for everyone that's listening, uh, grant us a hunger and a thirst for you. Help us to seek your face and, and to pray and to study your word and to walk how you will have us to walk. Um, do it for your glory. This we ask and pray in Jesus name. Amen. Have a good day, everybody.